Hey everyone, hope you're doing well and enjoying the summer. Today's video is going to be a course overview slash review video of CS6601, which is titled Artificial Intelligence in Georgia Tech's Online Master's in Computer Science program. Taking a look at the reviews for this class now, it seems like most people agree that this class is a difficult and time intensive course, but it is pretty well received and I found it to be pretty rewarding. It is difficult in, in the sense that the assignments and the topics can be considered difficult, but I won't say that it's difficult to get a good grade in the class. I unfortunately ended up with an 89 and they don't round up, so I got a B in the course. But overall, they do round up the grades in your favor, or I shouldn't say round up, they curve the grades in your favor. Uh, so certainly if I had tried a little harder, I could have gotten an A, but it nece wasn't necessarily my intention to get an A for the courses I take. I just want to make sure that I pass and get some value out of the courses. What you see here is the grading scale and how they weight each section of the gradebook. As you can see, it's definitely pretty favorable and pretty lenient. You can also drop your lowest assignment grade and assignments are weighted quite a lot plus there's a midterm and final exam. I actually did not try very hard on the midterm or final just because for the midterm I was in Fort Lauderdale that week so I didn't really want to spend a lot of time and then for the final I knew that I could do pretty poorly and still secure a B in the class whereas I would have to do relatively well to get an A in the class. If I had probably just tried to answer one more question I think I probably could have got an A in the class but not really worried about that since, as I said, I didn't really care too much about getting an A versus a B in the class. I'm going to go ahead and break down each assignment briefly, and I'm just going to walk through the whole course chronologically. If you're interested in checking out any of these assignments, you can always check them out on the course GitHub. You don't actually need to be enrolled or registered in the class to be able to see them, but you do need to have a Georgia Tech GitHub login, so that's the only prerequisite. I'll provide a link in the description if you're interested. In my semester, the first assignment was the game playing assignment, which is by nature a pretty interesting topic to me because I've always been kind of impressed by like chess, chess bots beating grandmasters and whatnot. We were asked to program a bot that wins the game isolation or a variant of the game isolation. I had never heard of isolation before, but you can just Google it. It's a pretty simple two player game. And overall the assignment was rewarding, but the grading was very frustrating because grades were assigned on the win ratio against the professor and TA's bot. And essentially it was frustrating because the win ratio was highly dictated by the random starting position. And of course, since the starting positions are random, your grades are somewhat left up to chance and you can only submit to grade scope once every six hours. So it kind of just, dictated your entire schedule and it was still left up to chance. I ended up with a 90 so can't really be mad but I was definitely not happy about how many times I had to submit before getting a 90. Assignment 2 for us was the search assignment though I understand that in the current offering of the class they switched around assignment 1 and 2 so search was first and then game playing but I know that the general topics of the assignments are the same. So for the search assignment you just implement A star uniform cost, and then you improve the efficiency of those algorithms by doing it bi-directionally and then tri-directionally. I don't have any qualms about this assignment, I thought it was good, and I really, really appreciated that you could submit to Gradescope every 30 minutes as opposed to every 6 hours, and there was nothing left up to chance. So if you got a certain grade, you submit it again, you would get the same grade. And that's one of the biggest problems that I had with assignment 1, so I definitely appreciated assignment 2. Assignment 1 and 2, I would say, are the most difficult from a programming standpoint. I don't think the concepts are very difficult, like uh, the game playing and search algorithms just intuitively don't seem that difficult to comprehend, but actually programming it can be more difficult. I would say if you're going to choose one assignment to drop, it'd probably be assignment 1 or 2 just because they take the longest and that would be a good time if you're taking another class to focus on the other one and get ahead on that. The third assignment is for Bayes nets and sampling. This assignment is pretty light programming wise and you do have to kind of work out the math by hand and then enter it into the computer. You implement Gibbs sampling and Metropolis Hastings for the sampling side of things and they limit the number of submissions to 10 so you want to be careful. But overall this is a pretty easy assignment. 
Uh, you're not really using any modern Python libraries for this, so this is kind of a lesson in the fundamentals, even though in the real world, if you're an ML engineer, you're not going to be doing any of this by hand, I would imagine. Next up, you have the midterm, which makes up 15% of your grade. I was definitely pleasantly surprised at the difficulty and the length of the midterm because I had heard from previous semesters that it could take up to 30 hours, uh, people suggesting that you take off work just so you can work on the midterm. But that certainly wasn't the case in our semester, maybe I just got lucky. But it took me around 15 hours and I only did one pass through the midterm because I was on vacation that week and I ended up with an 80, 81. Not much to say, I was happy with it, uh, and it's a pencil paper thing, so you do have to print it out and scan it in unless you want to be marking up the PDF and then submitting it to Gradescope. But you should be fine, I think, uh, in general. Maybe I just got lucky this semester. Assignment four is the next assignment, which is about decision trees and forests. In general, this is a very math-heavy and pretty complex topic, in my opinion, so I can't say that it took away everything that I should have. Uh, or I learned everything that I was exposed to, but generally the steps for the assignment are kind of as follows. Like you first build a decision tree by hand, which is something that nowadays you would never do since there's always libraries that just implement this stuff for you. But you build a decision tree by hand, then you automate the process so that you're building these decision trees that are splitting on the best node possible. And this plays upon concepts like entropy and information gain and so on and so forth. And then you eventually build upon what you did earlier in the assignment so that you can populate a forest where you set the number of trees in the forest. Uh, and then you can actually use it to try and classify on some data and you can evaluate the performance. Overall, this assignment is really interesting and it kind of just briefly exposes you to all sorts of minutia behind the scenes. Because uh, when you're working with machine learning libraries, nowadays you don't even really need to know what's going on under the covers, but it's nice to have some sort of exposure and it's not hard to get 100 on this assignment once you kind of wrap, it, wrap your head around what algorithm or equation you're supposed to be implementing. Assignment 5 was titled Gaussian Mixture Models. I can't really speak too much about it just because I didn't even attempt this assignment. As you know, you can drop your lowest assignment grade, and I had pretty good assignment grades up until this point, so I just took the zero, which got dropped and didn't spend much time on it, and kind of just got to relax this week. I will say I think it started with an exercise on k-means clustering and then expectation maximization, but again, don't really know much more than that since it's not available on the course GitHub anymore. Last but not least, assignment six is about hidden Markov models, and in this assignment you're using hidden Markov models to try and discern what word is being signed in sign language. So you're basically given the x and y coordinates of someone who's like signing some word in sign language and then use like hidden Markov models and you create like a Viterbi trellis to try and figure out what the output probabilities are going to be and then from there you just pick the one with the highest probability and say that's the word that was probably being signed. This assignment is pretty heavy on manually doing work and then putting it into the computer similar to the Bayes net assignment Overall, this isn't a difficult assignment and you should be able to get 100 on it relatively easily. I do think they are planning on updating this assignment in the near future, so things could change, but that last assignment was definitely not a difficult one. And that finally brings us to the final exam, which is 20% of your grade. In terms of format and length, I would say it's very analogous to the midterm, so not too long, maybe it was just uh, the spring 2021 semester that they decided to go easy on us, but it definitely wasn't that long, nor was it that difficult. Unfortunately, I was not in a good spot because assignment six is the last assignment, but there are still lectures that you're supposed to be watching after assignment six that cover topics like propositional logic, and I guess it's just called logic for that section. And then the last final topic is planning, and since there was no assignment that was associated with these last few lectures, I kind of mentally checked out. And when I saw it on the final exam, I was like, oh shoot, I forgot to watch all these lectures. But at this point, I already knew what my grade was gonna look like and I could get really low. Like I think I only had to get like a 45 on the final to secure a B in the class. So I totally just skipped those questions, ended up getting like a 60 on the final and ended up with a B in the class. Overall, I think if I were to actually try, I could probably get an 80, maybe even a 90, 
but just because I knew that I had to be pretty secured at that point, I chose not to really try and just have a nice late day with my friends that weekend. So similar to the midterm, you have a week to work on it on your own time, but I kind of just chose the easy way out and just did enough to make sure that I could lock in a B and then just mail it in. In closing, I think I can say that I really did enjoy this class. Of course, it was very time intensive and difficult in the beginning, and it really lightened up towards the end of the semester. I felt like I learned a lot, and it's a pretty good history lesson with artificial intelligence and a light introduction to machine learning. I say it's a history lesson just because some of the techniques that we've learned are a little bit older, and of course, nowadays with all these different libraries, a lot of the work is being done for these ML engineers automatically. They just need to have an understanding of when to apply these techniques and they just call the library that has a function for these things. But of course, I think it is important to have some sort of understanding and I think this is a good introduction to some of these techniques. I really did learn a lot through the assignments, which is my kind of preferred way to go about learning things. The lectures can be kind of light, so some people recommended reading the textbook, but I'm just not a good textbook reader, so I really found myself doing the bulk of the learning just by doing the assignments. That's my overall overview of AI. Of course, it is subject to change, but hopefully you guys found this useful.